All right, what's up guys? We are excited to finally be bringing you guys some rifle content. I know a lot of you have been asking for rifle content and uh, there's gonna be a lot more of that coming here on the channel. Uh, today, we're just gonna do a brief overview of my 14.5 from ADM, how I have it set up, why I chose what I did specifically for this build, um, and hopefully give you guys some insight if you're looking to build a gun that might fill kind of a similar role. So uh, first of all, this gun is um, not what I'm gonna call a do-all gun, right? I don't really think there is such a thing. Um, however, this gun is very versatile. So if I had to grab one gun out of um, my armory to go ahead and shoot, this gun is going to do a lot of things really, really well. Um, the way I have this specifically set up is this is going to be a gun that's going to excel past 100 yards. So for me, the number one thing with choosing kind of the optic as well as the barrel length is going to be the distances that I um, primarily wanna shoot this gun at. So for me, this is my 100 yard and out gun specifically. I know I'm gonna be shooting targets farther out. Um, it is really, really nice to have a little bit of extra barrel length for extra velocity. Um, as well as an optic that can handle itself out to longer distances, uh, such as this Razor 1 to 6. So um, I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of work down as, uh, as Mike Jones does, we'll just kind of go tip to butt and work our way down the rifle and talk about everything um, exactly how it's set up right now. So the very first thing that we've got on this rifle is a uh, Surefire suppressor. So this is the, this is the RC2 from Surefire, um, the 5.56 specific can um surefire cans love them they're bomb proof um they are uh pretty hefty as well um so it adds a pretty good amount of weight out front um i could see myself maybe upgrading to a k can in the future something a little bit shorter um something a little bit lighter but for now this is uh, the can that i've got on here so underneath that suppressor i've just got a surefire war comp for now um this Muzzle device here is pinned and welded to make this an overall length of 16 inches. Um, not the best suppressor host, but it is a pretty good muzzle device that does a lot of things well. Um, and that's just what it came with. Um, may change that out in the future, but we'll see. Um, back here, we've got the weapon mounted light. So weapon mounted lights are very important. I think there should be a weapon mounted light on every single rifle. Um, this one specifically is a mod light. Um, this is the OKW and the 18650 body. And then I've just got the Surefire DS00 tail cap on here, um, which has a push button in the back um, to uh, be able to activate the light if my pressure pad stops working. And then the pressure pad here is the mod light, um, mod button light. Um, just very minimal setup. Really like these um, activation switches. And then uh, this is kind of the older Gen 1 heads. Which I actually think are pretty awesome. They look really good. Um, mod lights pretty much on most of my rifles. Uh, can't go wrong there. Um, underneath here, I've just got a little piece of pick rail. So um, a lot of people will run hand stops or um, something, you know, like a like a chopped vertical grip or something like that. Um, I've run those in the past and they're de definitely very, very nice. However, I think specifically when you start trying to mount the gun in various uh, awkward positions, maybe off of barricades, or we're trying to kind of uh, get that gun to be nice and stable on uh, a flat surface or um, over a truck bed or whatever it is. Um, sometimes those hand stops or foregrips can get kind of in the way. So for me personally, I like to run my rails pretty minimalist as far as um, the bottom goes. Here I just have this little piece of pick rail. What I like about it is it does actually give me a little bit of uh, grip here so I can kind of wrap my index finger around the front of it and pull the gun back into my body really well. Um, it gives me a little bit of traction. It's easy to feel under gloves. And then I can also throw a um, bipod on here as well if I'm gonna be shooting this in kind of more of a dedicated long range capacity. So that's just personal preference, a little bit of pick rail up there. Uh, moving on back, um, the sling I've got here. So every uh, rifle, just like a weapon mounted light, every rifle should have a sling as well. Slings are super important. They allow you to go hands free um, and stow the, the gun in a safe condition, almost like a holster for your pistol. Um, this sling in particular is from Edgar Sherman Design. I really like this sling uh, specifically 
because it's super low profile, it's very thin. Um, not a huge fan of padded slings personally. Um, really like slings that just kind of stay out of the way. And I have it retained here with a Neomag Sentry strap. So um, I always recommend that everybody has some sort of sling retention device. Um, some slings come with them built in. I have some slings like that. Sometimes people wrap it around the buttstock and around the grip. That's also uh, a good way. This one specifically is made of elastic with a magnet. And so when I go to grab the sling, all I have to do is put my hand kind of on the inside of the sling and pull out and the sling deploys and I can go over my neck and immediately uh, start shooting. So um, really great way to kind of keep this uh, sling wrapped up out of the way if you're traveling in a vehicle, if you're traveling uh, maybe just even in a range bag um, or even just on a rifle rack great way to keep the uh, the sling retained there. So um, the sling, personally, we'll talk about sling management probably in another video, but I've got um, it attached just via QD, um, just a little BCM QD socket, and then back here on my end plate as well. Um, I like to run my sling kind of close together. A lot of different ways to do that. That's just kind of how I found to be uh, the most effective for me. The one thing I guess uh, that's left kind of on the front end of this is the barrel. So um, ADM builds all of their guns with Criterion barrels. Criterion barrels, I've been super impressed with. They're very forgiving, they're very accurate. They uh, last a long time. They stand up to a very, very high round count. Couldn't be more impressed with Criterion. Um, and honestly, any gun that's got one of those barrels in it um, is good to go in my book. So. Shout out to Maine, baby. Yeah, absolutely. They're made right here in Wisconsin um, as well, which is cool, as well as ADM. ADM is a Wisconsin company also, which is which is awesome. Um, so moving on back, um, the gun itself is uh, an ambi gun, which is really great. Um, ambi guns are not a must for me, um, but it does come with some kind of nice features. So right off the bat, um, it's got an enlarged bolt release so this paddle up here is really big it has some texture as well so it's really hard to miss um, the bottom of it too to lock the bolt to the rear is also kind of enlarged so if i just kind of reach up it's really easy to find pull the bolt back lock the bolt back um, and then hitting that on a reload super easy as well gun comes up thumb is right there and is able to hit that bolt release uh, no problem. If you're a uh, lefty like Justin, you've got a bolt um, or a magazine release right here. So you can just hit that with your index finger, reach up, hit the bolt release with your index finger as well. So everything is just right there, convenient for your index finger. Obviously the bolt catch as well. On this side for the righties, um, I've got a bolt release or bolt catch bolt release right here so if i'm going to lock the slide back and this is really what i use it for i don't usually use it to use it to drop the bolt after reload but i do put upward pressure run the bolt back and i can lock the bolt to the rear super easily with one hand and uh, that's actually pretty convenient um, these guns come with Radian safeties, the 45 degree safeties. Love these things. Radian Raptor charging handles. I think they're the best charging handles in the game. Uh, yeah, really kind of straightforward on the gun itself. Um, let's talk about the optic real quick. So the optic is a Vortex Razor Gen 2 1 to 6. So this is an LPVO. Um, the 1 to 6 specifically, I think, has uh, maybe the best 1x um, kind of you know zero magnification look. So um, really really clear, no real distortion. Um, the the eye box is super forgiving. The red dot inside, so the illuminated reticle is extremely bright even on very very sunny days. Um, I really think it is one of the best low power variable optics on the market. Um, there are also other really good ones as well that I've used, um, but this is one that um, has served me really well for, for quite some time. Um, I've got it in an ADM mount as well, uh, cantilever mount. And then on top, I have a Vortex Defender CCW dot. Um, this will probably change. Um, I'll probably go to either an enclosed emitter or one with a slightly bigger window and a smaller dot. This is a six MOA. Um, it works, um, obviously it's for up close, but it is a little bit of a pain to zero. Um, so just be aware of that. I would probably change this out to something with a smaller dot on the inside. Um, scope caps from 100 Concepts. Um, those guys over there are really awesome, making some pretty cool products. Um, so shout out to those guys. They sent out some caps for us to try. Um, light cap as well. 
Um, and so I've got these kind of on all of my scopes now. Um, moving on back, uh, I've just got the Magpul. Um, I believe this is the MOE SL, I believe it's called. Uh, I could be wrong on that. But anyways, it's the really slim line um, Magpul stock. Really like Magpul stocks, probably my favorite overall. And um, yeah, other than that, Magpul P Mags as always, uh, mag pods for uh, zeroing and other things like that. That's pretty much it, pretty straightforward. Geisley trigger. Um, yeah, don't really know what else to say about the gun. Um, big thing with choosing guns and just kind of how to outfit them, I think is um, just deciding what you're gonna do with them, right? So I have other guns. Um, for instance, I've got um, behind me, I have my, my main uh, Squeeze 11.5, right? It's got a dot and it's got a magnifier. Obviously it's a shorter barrel, um, a little bit of a handier gun. Um, like I said at the beginning though, this gun specifically is the gun that I'm gonna grab if I've gotta shoot beyond 100 yards, okay? So not saying that you can't shoot beyond 100 yards or beyond two or 300 yards with your dot gun, specifically if you have a magnifier on it, they're super capable platforms. But this gun does a lot of things really well. It doesn't do anything perfect, but it does a lot of things really well. This gun specifically, especially if I've gotta shoot, man, like three, four, five, even 600 yards, which I've done uh, quite often with a one to six, and a 14.5, like that is a really, really good combination. Um, so if you are looking to kind of put together a gun that fits that sort of role, it's gonna do a really good job at close distances. And I was also going to shine at farther distances. I would recommend going with something like this. Um, big shout out to ADM as well. Those dudes are awesome. Helped us put together this rifle and um, couldn't be more happy with this. You'll probably see me running it in class. You'll see it on the channel quite a bit. So there you have it. That is the overview on my ADM UIC Mod 2 14.5. Now, per gateway defense fashion, let's go hit the range and actually put some rounds to this thing. All right, what's up guys? So we're out here on the range. It is cold and dark and a little bit windy, but we're out here doing it anyway. So um, we have a little bit of artificial lighting uh, on the range here, but for the most part, I'm definitely needing to use my weapon mounted light um, for most of these shots. What we're gonna do is we've got a 10 inch steel target. It's about like 80 or 90 yards out there, just shy of hundred yards. I'm gonna do uh, two shots standing and then two shots prone. Um, and just work on building a good prone position and then also uh, having to utilize the weapon mount light. So um, I will go ahead and run myself on the timer here and uh, let's see what we can put together. All right, that was uh, a total of five shots. I had one uh, mic standing. So let's see, it was a 239 first shot, a 130 split, a 156. It took me 4.58 seconds to get prone to get a good sight picture and then also get my light on. So stuff to work on for sure. And then a 74 split in the prone. Um, right off the bat, I'm noticing I'm definitely slower. Some things are slowing me down. My hands are cold, shooting with gloves. Definitely getting the weapon mounted light and then also working through some of the, um, just the gas that's coming out. The hot gas that's coming out of my gun is like creating a, a almost a, a smoke screen. Um, having to wait a little bit for that to clear. Target focus is super important here. Um, that was a total time of, let's see, what was that? 10.57, let's try one more time and see if we can uh, go one for one on steel. So I think I had one mic from standing. Um, definitely was not better. So 1289, 208 first shot, 148 split, 122 split. Took one more, 174, 524. So yeah, not great. But we're out here, we're working it. Uh, 68 split in the prone. All right, so now we're just gonna change it up. Essentially, I've got two open targets right here in front of me. I've got an open target off to the left and then a double stack with a no shoot, uh, kind of deep right. So with five targets to play with, we're just gonna kind of see, um, 
just mix it up a little bit with some transition drills, working on driving the gun, getting my eyes out in front of, ahead of the gun. One thing that is a challenge with a gun like this that's set up with a scope, um, these guns, I think specifically with LPVOs, are a little bit harder on transitions, target transitions. So especially getting my eyes moving um, from going from uh, kind of that left to right um, is a little bit challenging. Um, it's just something you got to work through. I'm going to do this with a combination of using my top mounted red dot and then using my scope. So a way that I usually have my gun set up or often have it set up is having my magnification dial to something like three or four. Right now I have it on four. Um, so we'll try that. And then I'm just going to shoot the close up stuff with my top mounted dot. I think that gives me a lot of versatility. Um, I don't like maxing this all the way out to six unless I'm shooting prone and I'm really stable. Um, but yeah, let's give this a shot and uh, and see how we do. Um, let's go, let's go two um, on each of these close ones, and then transition to the back far left, and then back far right, the open, and then the head box. All right, all right, here we go. Stand by. All right, so I went red dot for everything except for the very last shot, which was that head box. That was a total time of 774. Let's go check it out. So two alpha here, a little bit low. That's just where I saw my dot. Two alpha here, dead center. Um, one thing to note about top mounted red dots for me, I really like a smaller dot for that top mounted dot. Right now I've got, I believe it's, this is a six MOA dot and I definitely feel like it's too big for shooting stuff at like 30, 40 yards. Um, I have huh, two Charlies, just both of them right outside the A zone. And back here with the double stack, I've got two alpha. Um, so again, I mean, this is what about 40 yards, 40, almost 50 yards, uh, two alpha with a red dot, and then up here using that 4X magnification, uh, two alpha in the head box uh, with the LPVO. So for me, this is where an LPVO really shines. Um, I almost treat it the same way on a drill like this as I would with a magnifier. So shooting things up close, fast and nasty with that single red dot. And then as soon as I need a little bit of magnification, flip that magnifier up. That's kind of how I treat this with the top mounted dot and then switching to that 4X magnification. Um, is that the only way to run an LPVO? Absolutely not. Can you just shoot it at 1X and then just reach your hand up, dial up to three to four? Absolutely. Um, just run your magnification. Yeah, that's absolutely fine as well. I think this ends up working pretty well. Um, and that's kind of how I have this gun set up. Now, if I'm gonna be shooting this gun to uh, one, two, three, 400 yards or something like that, then I'm definitely going to use my reticle inside of here. Um, and that's definitely gonna be the way to go. And just kind of using my magnification, not really messing with the top dot. Um, but as I have this gun sitting at home um, or in the truck or whatever, generally three or four here, and then making sure that top dot is ready to go. All right, let's, um, let's paste these up and let's do another iteration of that. All right, so one of the things that we like to do is work with the target setups that you have. So we don't like spending a bunch of time moving targets around and setting up different drills, right? Set up targets in random spaces and set up multiple shooting positions and just use different combinations of the order, the number of rounds and the different positions that you're gonna shoot from um, and get a lot of practice in that way. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna change it up again. This time we're gonna do something like designated target. So designated target is where you're gonna start and end on the same target um, and you're gonna come back to it in between each target. So that double stack at the far deep right corner, we're gonna use that head box as the uh, designated target. It's gonna be uh, a little bit spicy. I'm a, I'm a little bit scared to be honest, but uh, we're gonna do uh, two on the head and then two on the body, two on the head, two to the close body, two to the head, body, head, body, and then head. Um, 
So that head box will be pretty shot up. We'll look for all of my hits at the end. Um, what I'm going to force myself to do as well is these three targets, uh, the two close and the one on the left, I'm gonna force myself to use my top dot just to work on transitioning between getting my eye box out of the scope and onto that top dot. I will shoot the same target stand back there just with the, uh, with the scope. So let's go ahead and try it out. And every time I transition back to the head box, I'm gonna go ahead and use my, um, my LPVO. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that set at like three, almost four. And uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. All right. <clears throat> uh, take one step to your left. Yep, there you go. Stand by. Oh. That was tough, that was tough. I definitely mic'd one, I think on my third iteration, off to the uh, right, at least one or two. And then uh, these were okay. Definitely a little bit weird pushing my head back up to find that dot. Um, going back into the scope is pretty easy, but lifting my head up the right amount because I'm losing kind of that good cheek weld I had is a little bit strange. Let's check out the hits though. <clears throat> Let me grab my... Uh, Paster gun. So I've got two alphas right here, both a little bit low. Two alphas here. Yeah. I mean, this has got to be four inches or something. It's pretty. It's pretty wild. I had my dot in the upper half of the A zone, and I'm hitting middle to low. Um, not making excuses. That's just it is what it is. Uh, this one, I definitely saw my dot settle right in here is what it looked like. And yep, lo and behold, two Charlies a little bit low. That's kind of inexcusable. That target is about 30 yards. Um, I should definitely be shooting alphas there. <clears throat> oh boy, yeah. So I didn't feel good about this one either. So this one, I was still in my scope. I had two Charlies, both low and left. And then let's see how many times would I've shot this. So two four, six, eight, ten. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so I have literally have three mics. Uh, no, two mics, two mics on that. So um, I know both of them, well, one of them at least was over the top and one of them was over here. Oh, actually you can see, I don't know if you can catch that, Justin. There's a little tiny divot right in there uh, where I just greased the very edge of it. Um, Definitely pretty challenging. Trying to buy back stability um, on 4X is tough. To be honest, it's probably too much magnification. I could probably dial it down to about two and a half or three and um, do just as well with my hits. Anytime I'm shooting something that is difficult, I'm always tempted to run my magnification up, but it's a trap that you shouldn't fall in because um, anytime I run my magnification up, I, my, my sight picture appears to be much less steady. Um, so just kind of a word to the wise, most people are maxing out their magnification when they're shooting with an LPVO. They're either shooting it on one or six or one or eight, right? Um, and there's a lot of range in between. I think honestly, I would have better luck shooting this at like a, let's go like two and a half. Oh yeah, that looks honestly a lot better. Okay, let's do designated target one more time. This time, Justin, uh, you assign the order. Okay, designated target will be the left uh, close target right here. Ooh, nice, okay. All right, <clears throat> left close target, and then I can go kind of in any other order that I want. Yep. All right. <laughs> I have a very sketchy hit on the head box, my first shot. Uh, that was a 960. Um, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not too happy with that. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, close work, totally unacceptable. I have one Charlie here, one Charlie here. I have an Alpha and uh, Charlie. So um, yeah, that's not very good. <clears throat> that offset is crazy, man. Like I literally have it at the top of the A zone. Two alpha here, took a little bit of extra time, but it was bothering me that I wasn't hitting a lot of alphas back there. Um, so I corrected that. And then over here, oh, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Alpha, very close, Charlie. Yep, Alpha Mike. I knew it, I had one right over here. I should have taken a makeup shot on that one. Um, but honestly, I had my scope set to two and a half power. It honestly felt a lot better. I felt more confident and I called my shots a little bit better than when it was on 4X. So um, good, good kind of note for me. 40, 45 yards here, two and a half X for a six inch you know, head box. It's plenty. So, all right, let's pace these up and uh, let's maybe get in some movement. All right. so. Last roll of the night, we're gonna incorporate some movement, incorporate some fast shooting, um, so a little bit of shooting on the move, and then we're gonna hit that steel plate back at 100 yards. So um, I've got that double stack with a no shoot. I'm gonna shoot that two on each, kind of as I'm backing up, I'm going to make myself shoot them on the move. Um, I'm gonna run back to my second shooting position. I'm gonna shoot those two close open targets and the far left open target. And then from there, I'm gonna turn around and book it back to the 100 yard line, drop to the prone and get one hit on steel. All right, so um, we're actually gonna do three hits per or three shots per target. So this will be a total of uh, one, two, three, four, five, 15, should be about 16 rounds. All right, let's give this a shot and then let's go eat, I'm cold. All right, here we go, stand by. I don't know if the timer's gonna catch that. I realized I fell on it. Oh, it did. 22, 21. Let's go check the hits. So up here, I've got three alpha, three alpha. I'm not as cold now. I'm not as cold now. Um, three alpha. These head boxes were sketchy. On the move at like 12 yards, mm, I didn't like it. Should have. Two alpha, one Charlie, and then three Charlie, just above that no shoot. Do you know what I forgot to do? Even at like, what was that, like 10 to 12 yards? My offset's coming into play again. Um, I held here, that's just, I'm underestimating it. It's so much taller than my normal Unity stuff. But three Charlie, that is a total of four Charlies in a time of 22, 21. All right guys, I think that is about it for tonight. Um, I always like ending sessions like this with some sort of final uh, cumulative drill, something that gets uh, gets your blood pumping a little bit, something that challenges you, puts together maybe all of the things that you worked on in isolation um, from your range session. It's been a while since I've had a dedicated range session with this gun, so it's super great to get out and uh, run it. Um, anytime I have a gun that I'm building out, I want to be able to get out and shoot it really hard, right? Um, guns are guns are meant to be shot, um, meant to be used, they're tools. Um, so if you've got something that you have set up and uh, you just are setting it up based on principle only and not based on your experiences shooting, I would encourage you to take another look at that build. Um, I know that for today, 
Something that was catching me off guard time and time again was the offset of that top mounted dot. It's so tall. Um, I do think there's a benefit to running a top mounted versus an offset, uh, but there's some downsides as well. And I was figuring that out, figuring out some stuff with shooting in the cold with white light and uh, distance. That's all stuff that needs to be sorted out on the range. So guys, uh, if you want any other types of videos like this on any of the gear you see us run, be sure to let us know down in the comments. Until next time, keep practicing and shooting and we'll see you on the range. Thank you.